Hi everyone, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we're on day 165. Welcome to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here today and I hope your day is going great. We are going to be reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 27, Isaiah chapter 50, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and then we're going to close out the day with Psalm 94, but only verses 20 through 23. So let's get started with Deuteronomy chapter 27. Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I commanded you today. It shall be on the day when you shall pass over the Jordan to the land which Yahweh your God gives you, that you shall set yourself up great stones and coat them with plaster. You shall write on them all the words of this law when you have passed over, that you may go in the land which Yahweh your God gives you, a land flowing with milk and honey, as Yahweh, the God of your fathers, has promised you. It shall be, when you have crossed over the Jordan, that you shall set up these stones which I command you today on Mount Ebal, and you shall coat them with plaster. There you shall build an altar to Yahweh your God, an altar of stones. You shall not use any iron tool on them. You shall build Yahweh your God's, your God's altar with uncut stones. You shall offer burnt offerings on it to Yahweh your God. You shall sacrifice peace offerings and shall eat there. You shall rejoice before Yahweh your God. You shall write on the stones all the words of this law very plainly. Moses and the Levitical priests spoke to all Israel, saying, Be silent and listen. Israel, today you have become the people of Yahweh your God. You shall therefore obey Yahweh your God's voice and do his commandments and his statutes which I commanded you today. Moses commanded the people the same day, saying, These shall stand on Mount Gerizim, um, Gerizim, to bless the people when you have crossed over the Jordan. Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. These shall stand on Mount Ebal for the curse. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. With a loud voice the Levites shall say to all the men of Israel, Cursed is the man who makes an engraved or molten image, an abomination to Yahweh, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. All the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed is he who dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who removes his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who leads the blind astray on the road. And all the people say, Amen. Cursed is he who withholds justice from the foreigner, fatherless, and widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his father's wife because he dishonors his father's bed. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with any kind of animal, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who lies with his mother-in-law, all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who secretly kills his neighbor, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who takes a bribe to kill an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is he who doesn't uphold the words of this law by doing them, all the people shall say, Amen. Okay, is... um. 
Isaiah chapter 50 Yahweh says Where is the bill of your mother's divorce with which I have put her away? Or to which of my creditors have I sold you? Behold, you were sold for your iniquities, and your mother was put away for your transgressions. Why, when I came, was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Is my hand shortened at all that I can't redeem? Or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make the rivers a wilderness. Their fish stink because there is no water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness. I may make sackcloth their covering. The Lord Yahweh has given me the tongue of those who, were, who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with words him. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's start again at verse 4. The Lord Yahweh has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with words him who is weary. He awakens morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord Yahweh has opened my ear. I was not rebellious. I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me and my cheeks to those who plucked off the hair. I didn't hide my face from shame and spitting for the Lord Yahweh will help me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I won't be disappointed. He who justifies me is near. Who will bring charges against me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will help me. Who is he who will condemn me? Behold, they will grow old like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears Yahweh and obeys the voice of his servants? He who walks in darkness and has no light, let him trust in Yahweh's name and rely on his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who adorn yourselves with torches around yourselves, walk in the flame of your fire and among the torches that you have kindled, you will have this from my hand. You will lie down in sorrow. Well, I was going to keep on reading there. I wasn't ready to stop. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Here we go. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Christ our Lord? Aren't you my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, yet at least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Have we no right to eat and to drink? Have we no right to take along a wife who is a believer, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or have only Barnabas and I have no right to not work? What soldier ever serves at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and doesn't eat of its fruit? Or who feeds a flock and doesn't drink from the flock's milk? Do I speak these things according to the ways of men? Or doesn't the law also say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. Is it for the oxen that God cares, or does he say it assuredly for our sake? Yes, it is written for our sake, because he who plows ought to plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should partake of his hope. If we sowed to you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap your fleshly things? If others partake of this right over you, don't we yet more? 
Nevertheless, we didn't use this right, but we bear all things, that we may cause no hindrance to the good news of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve around sacred things eat from the things of the temple, and those who wait on the altar have their portion with the altar? Even so, the Lord ordained that those who proclaim the good news should live from the good news. But I have used none of these things, and I don't write these things that I may be done so in my case, for I would rather die than that anyone should make my boasting void. For if I preach the good news, I have nothing to boast about, for necessity is laid on me, but woe is me if I don't preach the good news. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but if not of my own will, I have a stewardship entrusted to me. What then is my reward? That when I preach the good news, I may present the good news of Christ without charge, so as not to abuse my authority in the good news. For though I was free from all, I brought myself under bondage to all, that I might gain the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain Jews to those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became weak, that I might gain the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I may by all means save some. Now I do this for the sake of the good news, that I may be a joint partaker of it. Don't you know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives a prize? Run like that, so that you may win. Every man who strives in the games exercises uh, self-control in all things. Now they do it to receive a corruptible crown. But we, uh, let me start that again, verse 25. Every man who strives in the games exercises self-control in all things. Now they do it to receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore run like that, not aimlessly. I fight like that, not beating the air, but I beat my body and I bring it into submission, lest by any means after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. So Paul explaining there that, you know, his concepts are really very simple, but the way he goes about um, speaking it is so, it's so wordy. You know, I, we have to remember that he, he was highly educated and um, of, of um what am i thinking about he um he was well known in the community for his his brilliance basically and <laughs> so basically what he's saying in all those words is that if i was with um if i was going to have a meeting with somebody to talk about christ if I was going to have a meeting with somebody who is very well off and uh, very wealthy, let's say, I would not present myself as I am. I am very uh, lower, uh, lower class financially. Uh, we don't have much. And so I would have to present myself with higher manners, with higher etiquette, behaviors that, you know, we don't worry about here in my house, but to be accepted and heard by, um, 
you know, somebody of a higher class, this is how I would behave. And vice versa. You know, if I was going to be going to, you know, the homeless guy who lives across the street, I'm not going to show up in my earrings and, you know, nice jeans. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to show up and, you know, have a talk with them. And um, so basically that is what he's saying. <laughs> Maybe I just got a little wordy. I don't know. <laughs> Psalm 94 verses 20 through 23 all right can i go back to yesterday just a little bit i'm going to start at verse 18 when i said my foot is slipping your loving kindness yahweh held me up in the multitude of my thoughts within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of wickedness have fellowship with you, which brings about mischief by statute? They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. But Yahweh has been my high tower, my God, the rock of my refuge. He has brought on them their own iniquity and will cut them off in their own wickedness. Yahweh, our God, will cut them off. Oh, it is a long race of life. That is for certain. Socially, there are things that go against everybody. But to speak with somebody, um, you know, that we, we may not necessarily agree with how they are living, or we may not even, um, you know, be to that level of how they're living. To speak to them in love and to preach the good news of Jesus we put our opinions to the side and we sit and talk with them and we listen, we listen with them and we let the Holy Spirit just kind of take over in that conversation. It's a daily, uh, daily exercise in how to communicate socially when we are trying to show love and compassion to people. And God will take care of the rest. <laughs> so thank you everyone for stopping by. I am truly so glad that you're here. It is such a weird day. I don't know if you can see out my window. The skies are white. It's incredibly humid. My house is dark, but I have the lights on, believe it or not. It's um, a really strange day. So um, anyways, so happy that you stopped by. And I will see you tomorrow for day 165. Nope, 166. I'll get it together. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Bye.